yourself in and get ready. And here we go, here we go. The leaders in fantasy football are incoming. Giving you the ultimate insight to help you win your leagues and dominate your mates. You're now listening to the Insight NFL Show with your hosts, Guns and Maverick. Welcome to the NFL. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Alrighty, well, welcome back to another episode of the NFL Insight Fantasy Show. Um, I'm your host, Nathan, from Supercoach Guns, and with me, as always, my legendary co-host, Matt, aka NFL Maverick. Matt, how are you going? Uh, love it, mate, love it. Uh, going great, as always, Monday nights, yeah, huge shows coming up, so yeah, pumped. How are you going? Oh, not too bad. I'm, I'm looking forward to finishing off the quarterback series so we can get into my favourite position on the NFL field, running backs. So I'm looking forward to getting straight into it. Um, and that's what we'll do. So biggest news story this week was Trevor Lawrence re-signing for five years, $275 million, $55 million per year, equal most in the NFL with Joe Burrow. And here I was last week saying, it's a big year. Is he the guy? Who knows? But clearly, the Jaguars think they've got their man. Yeah, he's a man now, isn't he? he? He's just been paid an absolute bag. Um, I, I love it. I personally love it. I think they had to do it. Um, it's hard to get a good QB in the league, and he's probably on the fringe, probably pushing top 10. I probably think he's in the top 10 just. He had a good playoff run a couple of years ago, so um, I'm backing him in to have a, a bounce-back year and um, hopefully finish in the top 10 QBs for the year. Yeah, it'll be interesting because, like, he does have pretty good weapons. Calvin Ridley, like, although the hype around him joining them was big, he didn't actually deliver on that really at all. Like, he had so many drops. Christian Kirk was injured for half of last year. Evan Engram was solid, as, as always. And now they've they've got their third wide receiver in Brian Thomas. They've, they've brought in Gabe Davis to replace... Um, uh, Calvin Ridley and well Christian Kirk's back fit and healthy. Um, the offense should take a step forward, provided of course Trevor Lawrence takes a step forward. I think it's way overs on the contract though. Oh, yeah, like yeah, 40? fifty million dollars a year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's a guarantee as well. Yeah, it, it's it's not not a pretty contract for the uh, Jaguars to be looking at, but. They've got their guy, I suppose. Um, now, Alvin Kamara, he sat out of the Saints' final uh, mini camp before official training camp starts, of course, uh, due to a contract issue. So um, I imagine it gets resolved before the season starts. But, I mean, like in any event, if he doesn't play for whatever reason, you get Kendra Miller. Like, you know, he's he's been hyped up and we'll have, we'll have a look at him in the running back series. But I imagine he will... Uh, yeah, he'll benefit a lot with Kamara missing, if Kamara misses, of course. Yeah, I'd love to see Miller get more snaps next year. Um, I loved his college days. He went early in rookie drafts, I thought, last year. He was probably early second round, but they were hoping that he'd probably take over the, the backfield over Kamara. And then Kamara came out of suspension and went bonkers. I think he finishes the RB2 or RB3 after missing the first three or four weeks, I think it was, from memory, which is just insane. So... Um, another year on Kamara's body. I think he should slow down just a tad, but um, I'm not too worried about him sitting out due to contract disputes. Um, they end up fixing this up pretty quickly. Um, RBs probably in a the basket of a bit harder these days with with RBs getting paid, but he'll get something. They'll they'll fix something up for him. Yeah, and you've got to remember, like it, he's. He's in this unique situation where he's not only, you know, running back, but he's actually a very, very good pass catcher. Like there was multiple games last year where he had over ten targets in a game, and yeah, he's an integral part of their passing game. So you'd be inclined to give him what he wants because there's no one on that Saints roster and very few players in the league that can uh, catch passes out of the backfield like what Kamara can. Um, 
Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah, he's, spot on. He's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, now, over at New York, uh, listen, uh, you might remember when we spoke about the uh, rookies in the rookie. Um, I'll try and word this better. In the rookie draft that we went through, uh, Tyrone Tracy came up late in the piece because he's currently on the second spot on their depth chart for the New York. And, well, news has come through this week that he's been taking reps with the starters and is making a push to be the third down back for the Giants. Um, I think we kind of thought that this – we did flag that this could very well happen. He could be their third down guy. Devin Singletary, not a noted pass catching back. Yeah, honestly, he's probably one that rises. I would probably look to take him at you know late third round these days in rookie drafts um, because you probably have to reach a little bit to get him. Um, I think it's worth it. Um, I think he's got the ability and the, let's say, the opportunity to start over Devin Singletary, who has been bouncing around the league the last couple of years. So um, New York are probably looking for a spark and Tyrone Tracy might be the guy. Yeah, this would be uh, this would be one that's worth watching in training camp to see, you know, just how involved Tracy is in their uh, running backs situation. Um, another surprise, uh, uh, I suppose, promotion in the depth chart is Sam Darnold over at Minnesota. Uh, he currently sits at QB1 ahead of JJ McCarthy. And I believe, if I can get it up fast enough, there is a quote from uh, Jeremy Flower at ESPN saying that they believe there's untapped potential in Sam Darnold and they think he's never had a supporting cast like he has had in Minnesota. Now, for starters, he did play at San Francisco last year, albeit as a backup, where I reckon he had a better supporting cast. But, um, you know, in terms of Sam Darnold, the starting quarterback, uh, it, it's basically just an older J.J. McCarthy. Yeah, it's a hard one, isn't it? I mean, we'll cover these guys probably more later on in the show. Um, but just to give you a little taste of what we're going to talk about, I don't really know what to expect here. I mean, Darnold was a high pick, what, five years ago now. Um, and he's got weapons galore next to him. So if he rips the house down, how do you not start him? And how do you not bench him down the line if he still continues to dominate? Like, what do you do? I mean, you just taken a, a QB at pick 11, I think it was. Uh, he's got to ride the hot hand, I believe. I, I think so. I mean, from a head coaching perspective, this is a good headache to have, I suppose, for Kevin O'Connell. Um, I think, look, if, if Sam Darnold can find that, finally deliver on the hype that he was asked to deliver on way back in 2018 when he was like the second overall pick at New York. Well, I mean, I I don't think the Vikings would be opposed to it at all. Um, I don't know if, uh, if I was a Vikings fan, if I'd be thrilled about hearing Sam Darnold being a starter. Um, I understand I'm not a big, I know I'm not a big JJ McCarthy fan, but it, like there's a reason he went tenth overall, and it can't just be because he's a handoff merchant. Despite <coughs> what I will say later on as well, you know he's got to have some sort of passing talent to him, and he does. And I feel like they're in a position where you should be building rapport between the two JJs, McCarthy and Jefferson, right? Uh, look, it's it's a hard one. I mean, I think you just run with a hot hand the whole way through. Um, again, you may get some value out of Darnold if he starts balling out the trade deadline. Um, maybe you can squeeze a, a third rounder out of someone. Um, maybe. It depends how well he goes, I suppose. But also, he just might be crap and gets bent for J.J. McCarthy. He might come in and dominate. But we'll, uh, we'll cover that one a bit later on. Yeah, fair enough. And, yeah, we'll, we'll, as you say, we'll get to that one. Um, now, interesting situation at Denver. I think we both commented on it today on socials. But uh, Jaleel, McGu- M- Jaleel McLaughlin, 
is apparently Denver's top running back, according to Denver Broncos reporter Cecil Lammy. Uh, he's also claimed, uh, he or she, I don't actually know, um, also claimed that Javante may not make the team. Now, that feels a bit headline-grabbing to me personally, him not making the team. Um, but it does tell me that the gap between Julio McLaughlin and Javante Williams is certainly closer than what we thought it was. I just want to know if this reporter has a job after that report. Um, <laughs> now, I just don't know what to think of this. Javante Williams is a much better running back than Julio McLaughlin. Um, and if Denver don't like him, then they can just bloody trade him because he'll have some value around the league somewhere. Um, the Dallas Cowboys will probably come knocking because they need a running back. And if they're thinking about cutting him, then surely he's worth nothing to trade for. So, um, But anyway, I, I really like Javonta. I don't know why they are coming up with this sort of stuff. Um, I guess they're probably closer to the scene than all we are. But there is no chance in hell that Javonta Williams will not be starting in game one. It's not happening. Yeah. And there's also the problem about Julian McLaughlin, the pass blocker. Like, he cannot block the life of him. So unless they're going to give some RJP on the third down snaps and just use McLaughlin's elusiveness on early downs, I suppose, I feel there's still... I feel like the running back role will actually end up being a bit split. I still think it'll be in Javante's favour, but uh, the real loser for me in this situation has got to be P. Ryan, right? He's got he's got no early down work because I'll give that to Javante. Um, in terms of change of pace, like that's Julian McLaughlin for sure. Uh, and third down, well, they'll just give that to Javante as well because he's a pretty pretty good pass catcher himself. So, where does that leave Piran? Probably cut before the season starts for me personally. How bad is offense? It's a dumpster fire. It's an absolute dump, dumpster fire, and. You'll, you'll notice tonight we don't mention Bo Nix at all because there's no point mentioning him. <laughs> I just can't believe how bad this offense has gone. Like a year and a half ago, they were so pumped they got Russell Wilson, or two years ago, should I say. They, they, they got rid of him. Their paying is still a bucket load of his salary. And they're starting off with no Jerry Judy. They traded him for donuts. And now they're saying Javonta Williams is going to get cut. Like, where is this team going? It's Troy Franklin wide receiver one season. That's all I'm hearing. Oh, it could be. (laughs) Oh, dear. Yeah, that's going to be an offense to avoid for fantasy this year. Unless, of course, like, you know, someone's offering you Javante for a bag of chips, in which case you take it because he probably ends up at Dallas by week seven. Um, (laughs) uh, Juwan Johnson, Saints tight end. Um, He injured his foot, I believe if my memory serves me correctly, and he's underwent surgery for that. He is aiming to return week one. So there's Mm. no preseason game for him. There's no trading camp for him. It is a week one return at best for Juwan Johnson. Uh, In terms of fantasy relevance, he he had a bit of, you know, sleeper potential just because of how late he goes in drafts. And sometimes he doesn't get drafted and he's on waivers, right? Uh, and he, he's got he's a pretty solid pass catching tight end. So I would have, I would expect Taysom Hill to get a heck of a lot of snaps now, or Foster Moreau. Uh, in terms of fantasy, uh, I'm not rush. You, you might go to waivers for Taysom Hill just in case he has a big blow up game. But you know, I don't know if it's really that relevant. So if Juwan Johnson's not on the field, let's say for week one. And beyond mm. week one, should we say. Taysom Hill. Oh, <laughs> this guy can do it all. <laughs> I mean, he had games last year. He had 14.8, 21.9, 18.6 in back-to-back-to-back weeks. Had the bye, came out and dropped a seven, dropped a 14. Like, this guy can do everything. He can throw the ball. He can run it in. He can, he can what do you block he can catch him what can't he do so if he's more if he's on the field more 
why would you take him as a, like a last pick in your draft and hoping that he might ball out early? Because he has these big blow-up games. Yeah. He's, he's a great um, streaming option as well because you he, he's not only does he cover tight end, he covers quarterback too. So yeah. he's one of those rare dual position guys. And, you know, imagine, you, you know, for, let's let's I'll give you a hypothetical. It's week seven, you know, you're starting quarterbacks on the bye. Um, Taysom Hill, Juwan Johnson's, I don't know, dead or something. He's not playing. And you've got Taysom Hill just sitting there in your lineup. And you're like, all right, let's have a bit of fun. We'll start Taysom Hill. Bam. He, he's had three snaps at running back. They can't at quarterback, but running back, you know what I mean? They just called three quarterback draws. He's ran for three carries, like 120 yards and two touchdowns. He's done that against Seattle before. I was scarred from that. Um, you know, and you're sitting pretty with like 30 fantasy points or because the dude's having snaps at quarterback and tight end. Like, it's so, he, he's so fun to own. Oh, yeah. And speaking of which, your example happened to me last year in a league. There was no QBs in the waivers. <laughs> it was just the old Taysom Hill. And I actually think that was the week he had his 21. I think he had two rushing touchdowns nice. that day. Oh. <laughs> um, you can just love to get around him. Um, he's so fun to watch and he's energetic too. He just mm. loves playing. So I know he's a bit old now. He's 33. Oh, he was old before he started. But yeah, 33. Um, if there's no Juwan Johnson, yeah, great streaming option. Yeah. Bit of fun. Um, now, speaking of fun, this this Atlanta Falcons offense is going to be entertaining as hell because Falcons head coach Raheem Morris uh, has been quoted at a press conference saying, we're going to look to get the ball to Bajan as much as, as much as we can in as many ideal situations as you possibly can. It's just, it, it's screaming to me, Bajan overall RB1 season. We'll get to that probably next week, but yeah, I'm all in on Bajan this season. Oh, yeah. I mean, I still have CMC personally, but there's no reason why Robinson can't be number two. Um, and the way that they're just screaming his name out at the moment, it's just fantasy gold. Um, if in any dynasty league that you're in, do not sell him unless you're getting complete overs. Otherwise, just roll with the uh, season he's going to have because it's going to be huge. Mm. I'm going to put you on the spot here with a question. What would you describe as complete overs for Bajan Robinson? In a dynasty league, I would probably say three first round picks is probably completely overs. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I don't know about you, I'd still want a running back who finishes as RB1, you know? Like, yeah. Maybe not as well as three firsts. If you're um, in a situation where you're sitting, you know, bottom two, bottom three, not really a chance of competing this year or beyond 2024, and you get off in an absolute haul for Bajan, I would take it. But you've got to pay. You have to pay because someone else will. Yeah, that's right. Because I think whoever has Bajan now just has him now, you know? Yeah. I, I, I don't think... You're at the point where you're giving up too much to actually benefit your team, particularly if it's those three firsts, as you say. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that's that's it for the news. Uh, let's get into the uh, meat and potatoes of the show, shall we? Quarterbacks. Uh, now, last week we were covering uh, guys that could finish in the top 12 before we realised we could easily go for another hour and a half on top of the hour and a half that we already did. So we cut it short. And we're now going to come back, and the guy we start out with is the number one overall pick in the 2024 draft, Caleb Williams. Uh, for me, you know, he's got probably the be- one of the best wide receiver trios in the league. Uh, he's got a great pass catching tight end. DeAndre Swift can catch passes. He's got a pretty solid O-line. Um, it's a good offensive scheme, and he's a hell of a player. Um, if there's, there might be some growing pains there for Caleb Williams as a rookie, um, and that's why I'm hesitant to say that he finishes top 12, but he's going to go pretty close, isn't he? 
Yeah, yeah. You just hope he doesn't shit the bed in his rookie season like some QBs have in the past. Um, it's probably their only concern, but talent wise, talent is there. Um, and as you said, the wide receiver room that he's got is just unbelievable and they've just surrounded him with weapons from the get-go. So there is no reason why he can't push top 10. Um, I want to see him get more rushing touchdowns along the line, uh, which he can probably do. But, um, yeah, he's just a one heck of a player. And I, I'd like to see where he could go this year because the sky really is the limit for him. Yeah, it is. And, oh, look, like in college, he wasn't a noted rusher. Um, but it's just, it's like, he can, he can do it. Like when we say that when, for me, the player copies my homes in the sense that, you know, he can do it all. Um, but you know, his value is in his passing really, particularly for fantasy. Like if he comes out and brains at first year, we're talking someone who will push for, I don't know, top, top six, seven quarterbacks for fantasy. But, you know, I'm very happy to call him a, uh, top 12 candidate this year. Well, I mean, if you're getting him in redraft leagues as a QB, uh, let's say QB 13, 14 off the board, he's done really well, I reckon, um, because that's where your upside is because he could end up just going bonkers this year. And if he does, well, you've got all the value in the world. So if you're getting him as a QB 14, right on to you because that's a steal. Yeah, it is. Uh, another guy who's in and around that uh, early teens in draft in uh, quarterback rankings on sleeper uh, is Jaden Daniels. Now, I think for for me, his value hinges on how much he's they're willing to give him design runs. You know, um, if the common sense play in my head says you've seen what the Colts did with Anthony Richardson last year. You can't let the dude run for 10 times a game from the get-go. You've got you to ease that aspect, of, ease him into the physicality of the NFL, probably. Um, so will will he push, will he have like this big rushing season? Uh, I, I doubt it, right? I, I suspect that you'll see his running game pick up in the second half of the season. Um, he does have some good weapons to throw to, and he's got quite quite the arm. Um, he's got Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson, uh, rookie tight end Ben Sinnott, who is a bit quite a bit of hype around as we've covered in previous podcasts. And uh, oh, then what? Oh yeah, Luke McCaffrey. Um, and you know, so that he's got weapons to throw to. Um, mm. For me, as as we same point for Caleb Williams, the rookie growing pains are going to be. Uh, his biggest question mark, as well as how much they're willing to, uh, I suppose, use him in design runs in year one. I think the biggest hatred about Jaden Daniels for me, and it's not him personally, but this is for fantasy drafts, I suppose, is him getting sacked. Um, I don't think he'll have enough time in the pocket. The O-line's pretty crap. Um, I mean... He's going to have to run the balls off his off himself if he's going to be able to get through that O-line. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, as you said, he does have a few weapons. I love Scary Terry. Uh, and I hope finally he gets a good QB in the league to really elevate him. Um, but, yeah, I just really don't know what to expect out of Jaden Daniels this year for a one-year rookie draft, uh, for a uh, redraft league. Um, currently on Fantasy Pros, he is the QB 13. Um, and Caleb Williams, just for reference, was QB 15. So I would much rather Caleb Williams over Jaden Daniels personally. Um, and I think Jaden Daniels at 13 is probably just a little bit too high because I just don't think his passing is good enough just yet. I could be wrong, but he's going to have to come out and absolutely dominate in the passing game for his, for his running game to open up, I believe. Yeah, I think so because you know it, there's there's a lot that needs to go right for Jaden Daniels to finish top twelve. But I think the point and the re, the point I want to make and the reason that I put him in this conversation is that you know we could be wildly wrong about how much he's willing to run, 
E1. And if we are, and he can stay fit somehow, uh, yeah, he'll be a tube, he'll finish in the top 12 for sure, uh, providing injury doesn't knock him down. Um, a guy that I think, you know, I'm willing to put it out there, probably a 95% chance of finishing in the top 12 is Brock Purdy. Um, just with the weapons he has, uh, the O line he's got, and the, uh, well, Clearly, the, the even more developed passing ability than what he's what he showed last year. Um, you know, he's just going to keep getting better, and uh, you know, San Fran's offense it just keeps getting exciting, particularly with the addition of Ricky Pearsall, who's been uh, trading the house down. Apparently, that the 49ers were so, saying that they reckon they've got a steal for him. They, they've stopped. Uh, is, yeah, I'm not wording. Uh, my words very well tonight, but I think they've got they think they've got a steal for him at pick thirty one. Yeah, so Brock Purdy last year finished as the QB six on the year, albeit there was quite a few injuries in the league in QBs last year. I thought a lot of backups running around in the second half of the year, which sort of sucked in a way. But um, I mean, he's going as the QB 11 currently off the board and he is in such a good system there that he's just so consistent. Um, now, he had games where he went big, went for like 29 and 25 and 26 and 26 again. Like they're all sort of in between each other as well. So he has those big blow up games and he's got such a good offense around him with McCaffrey and Debo and Ayuk and Pearsall, as you said, in Kittle. Like, it's just, let's say they're all together. There's re no reason why this guy can't have, you know, four or five touchdowns in one game alone um, when they belt someone, because they will eventually belt someone. Um, so if you're giving Mr. QB 11 off the board, I think he'd be happy with that, because, again, he's got potential to finish top five, top six. Um, you probably need a few injuries for it to happen. But the ability is there. Um and I, I think he's a very good system player. Yeah, I, I do too. And, you know, I, they're going to pay him at some point. It, from an NFL perspective, they're going to pay him at some point. Um, and he'll be desperate to show them that he's worth the same amount of money that these these uh, big names are getting, like apparently Trevor Lawrence. Um, but, yeah, so I think he'll be pushing for a big contract this year. I don't know if it's a contract year for him or not. Um, that might be some, it's something worth researching later on. Um, but whilst I'll do that, but first, uh, Jared Goff. Now, last year he took the Lions to the NFC Championship. Uh, ended up getting beaten by the 49ers. Um, but, you know, as always, very pretty much a copy and paste situation to what Brock Purdy is in, you know. He's got a pretty very good O-line, actually. Uh, he's got pretty very good running back play in Jimmy Gibbs and David Montgomery. Uh, you've got Armin Rasen Brown. You've got uh, Jamison Williams finally with an uninterrupted preseason uh, at tight end one last year, Sam Laporta, in his second year. So this offense can get better. Uh, that's scary to think about because it was very good last year. And I think Jared Goff is being slept on in terms of his fantasy production. Yeah, that's a very, very good one. Um, I love the Detroit Lions. I love watching them play. I've been following them hard for the last two or three years. Um, and Jamison Williams and Jimmy Gibbs is going to make this team so much better in fantasy. It's, it's crazy. It might hamper Armin Ra just a little bit, but in terms of Jared Goff, I mean, he finished as a QB7 last year um, and, again, had some big blow-up games. I mean, he had a 31-banger in there, he had a 29-banger in there, and he had a 27-banger in there. So um, he just signed a new contract, so he's going to be hungry to try and get this team to the next level. And if you're getting him as – he's still going outside the top 10 in QB, so if you're getting him, you know, 12, 13 QB off the board, oh, bloody oath. I think you'd be happy with that. I certainly would be because, 
you know, when we're talking about 12 or, 13, 12 or 13th quarterback off the board, you know, in terms of general ADP in like a redraft league, assuming it's not super flex, uh, you're looking at, you know, early hundreds or late nine or late nineties sort of thing, right? Um, and that's insane value for a guy that has all these weapons. Uh, he's a damn good passer of the football too. So he's a guy that could really put it together and I see no reason why he doesn't personally. Um, and another guy who's got a boatload of weapons and that boat just got bigger, uh, that's Tua Tagovailoa. Now, obviously last year, Devon A. Chain missed time throughout. Uh, he's a solid pass catcher. They've added Jalen Wright, another <clears throat> elusive, fast running back who can kind of, I think he can kind of, oh, no, he can't really catch. That's what we talked about. Um, he can't really catch, but he changes the pace. He stretches the stretches the field. It benefits their offense greatly still. Um, and then, of course, you've got Jalen Waddle, Tyreek Hill. Um, there's a lot to like about this offense. The only thing I don't actually like is Tua himself. Um, I think he's definitely propped up by the system he's in. But, Regardless, he's got good pieces around him and he can still throw the ball uh, pretty well, despite my slander against him. Uh, I think he can push for top 12. I think he's one of the ones that might. He'll be very fringe. Yeah, for sure. The only thing I'm really worried about Tour is the fact that his brain is pretty much nearly a vegetable. Um <laughs> one more concussion could be the end of him. Um, so he has that potential to really connect with Tyreek Hill. Um, we've seen it countless times where these long balls go deep to Tyreek and he runs it in for a 60-yard touchdown. But you also see Dan's where he just absolutely shits the bed and is terrible. So um, what you see is what you get out of Tua. He's probably going at around about 13, 14 uh, QB off the board for a good goddamn reason. Um, he finishes QB nine last year. Again, there was a few injuries in the league. which probably bolstered him up a little bit, but um, the upside to Tua is he does have big blow games as well. So with the weapons that he's got. So realistically, he should be pushing top 10 for his own circumstances because otherwise he's just crap yeah and you'd you'd hope that he has a um a, a bigger year than what he's had in the past because this is his has he been paid or is he looking to get paid after this season? he's looking to get paid he's, he's ah. him and dak are in that conversation yeah okay well this is this is what we call a contract year this is good stuff and you know what they say about players in contract years? They blow up. Yeah, so, so that's funny you say that. So now that he's a QB 14 or around about the QB 14, I'd probably target him because he's going to get paid. And then after that, don't touch him. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, if you're looking at redraft and redraft only, pretty good value for QB 14. Um, another guy who I think it, it, it just depends on how well he personally fares. Like, he's got all the weapons around him. But Aaron Rodgers. Obviously, there was a ton of hype about the Jets' offense last year, and rightly so. You know, they had all the pieces around them. Around them. All they needed was a good quarterback. Zach Wilson wasn't it. Aaron Rodgers is it. Tears his Achilles on the first drive of the season. Bam. That's their, that's their season out the window, right? Is Aaron Rodgers going to return and do Aaron Rodgers things, or was that a career ender? That's, I guess, the big question here. If he keeps on keeping on Aaron Rodgers, I think it's he'll, he'll be very much pushing for for uh, top twelve honors. Um, if it is, you know, the demise of Rodgers, that Achilles injury, and he just doesn't have the same sort of elusiveness he had in the pocket, then you know, we're talking about a guy you would want to avoid uh, quite a lot. Yeah. I mean, Aaron Rodgers and Aaron Rodgers, right? Um, 
there was rumours going around the end of the year that he'd come back for the playoffs if they made it or late in the season or uh, that was a sandbagging. I thought that was never going to happen. Um, this Jets team is looking to make the Super Bowl this year. I reckon they, they are so elite everywhere and they just needed a QB. Aaron Rodgers is that QB. Um, I hope he comes back and dominates. I really do. Age is probably his biggest downfall, um, especially off an Achilles. So it's hard to really predict what he's going to do. I'd probably stay away fantasy-wise. Um, however, he does have Garrett Wilson there and he does have Brees Hall there. So, and he's got his, cute, uh, his, his Green Bay boys from, from uh, a couple of years ago. So he'll know this system pretty damn well. Um, Malachi Corley still there. He's there for a bit of a home run threat. So I'd probably stay away from him for fantasy personally, unless you're getting him really late. But um, I hope this Jet team goes well, though. I really do. Yeah, and I'll throw another name in there. He's no slouch either, but Mike Williams is also on that Jets team. So that's just going to really stretch the field with Garrett Wilson, Mike Williams. Yep. You've also got Alan Lazard and, as you say, Malachi. So, like, they've got a lot of good friends on Cobb. the team. <laughs> the ghost of Randall Cobb. <laughs> oh, I've missed him. I've missed talking about Randall Cobb. Um, well, let's see. Where's he going? He Aaron Rodgers is going um, after Kirk Cousins um, at around, I mean, his ADP in redraft is 140, and I don't have the time right now to count each of the quarterbacks here. So we'll say it's a late teens quarterback. Um, I think that's a bit harsh on the fella. I think he probably, even if he's not the same player, you know, if he's not the same player, he finishes where he's being drafted. Yeah, he, I, he, I don't think I'd draft him. I don't think yeah, I'd draft him drafted. personally. Um, I don't think I would. But I do want to see him go well in an NFL perspective. I actually really like Aaron Rodgers. Um, so, yeah, I personally don't think... I'd, I'd draft him in fantasy because he's, he's 39 years old now. I mean, he's not going to get any better. Um, and I'm looking for those guys that are going to get better. And he's just, if he stays the same, then he's fine. But, you know, if he gets worse, then you just lose that value, I suppose. Don't you? Never say never. You, you never know what Ayahuasca does to a quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I suppose like it'd probably eat for the top 12 conversations you could you could throw justin herbert in there and maybe we should just to be polite um initially i didn't have herbert in there purely because and it's no knock on him it's just because of how much they're going to freaking run the ball right um is he going to have enough sufficient pass attempts to actually put up uh qb1 numbers or is he just gonna you know he could still have a very good nfl year and not finish top 12 just because of the way that his offense works right so it's not a personal thing. It's just, you know, they're, they're very intent. We're going to run the damn football. We're going to run it a damn lot, right? Um, I don't know. What are your thoughts, Matt? Uh, he's currently going as the QB 120th, which is in between mm -hmm. Jordan Love and Trevor Lawrence. I'm, I'm going to clarify, um, you mean the ADP of 120, not sorry, the 120th a, quarterback. <laughs> yes, sorry, ADP 120, my mistake, um, which is, yeah, in between Jordan Love and Trevor Lawrence. So he's going pretty damn high. Like That's that's probably mm. borderline top 10. Um, I would get, I would, I would draft him exactly where, he's, where he is. Um, I would, I love him as a player. And him, Lad McConkey can make an absolute duo together if they can sort this out. Oh, uh, for sure. I agree that McConkey and Justin Herbert will fire together. Uh, that's one receiver. And unless he's unless Lad McConkey goes out and has three and a half thousand receiving yards this year, I don't think Justin Herbert can finish as a QB one. Yeah, see, I think that. Um... <laughs> You know, he's got Josh Palmer there, and I want to see the big Q. The big Q I want him to see to oh. take that next step at the NFL level. It, it's, it's, if he's okay, a good QB, it, yeah, well, 
if if he's a good QB, he will come out and play well. And I think he is. He finds he'll find he, a way. I think he will find a way as well. But my I guess my point uh, is that you he could still be a very good NFL quarterback and not put up good fantasy numbers. And I just think that's what's going to happen this year. I think I don't I, I don't I don't agree with what Jim Harbaugh was doing, but he seems hell bent on running the ball thirty times a game, and it doesn't real or thirty to thirty five times a game, and it doesn't really leave much room for Herbert to put up four thousand passing yards, which is probably close to what he needs to finish in the top twelve. So you can't even base off his numbers last year because it's a completely different receiving court. Yep. But um, like he finished as QB seventeen last year, he had a few injuries, so um, you can't really take much out of it. But again, he had Gantry had 28, 24, 24, 23, 28. Like I just think that he's too good of a player to really take a, a massive step back. Um, and you know, the O line got more protection as well. So he's going to have more time in the pocket to really fire him down the line. I just think he's fine. I think he's fine, and this is going to be a running argument. I'm going to I'm going to hold you to this when the season starts. But Justin Herbert will be a top twelve QB. That's not really saying a hell of a lot, but that's not really going completely out there. But he's a safe pick for mine if he stays healthy. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll I'll put this to you. All right. Now I understand the college football. And the NFL are a bit different. JJ McCarthy attempted 332 passes last year, completed 240 of them. Right? Now, obviously, would I say that Justin Herbert was a better talent than what JJ McCarthy was coming out of college? Yes, yes, I would. Right? Um, Justin Herbert had a career low 456 passing attempts last year. Um, you know, and, and completed 297 of them. So he's completing it six, he completed 65% last year. And that sort of, that figure's pretty much held constant throughout his career. Never going below 65, never going above 60, 65, 68 and a half, sorry. Um, I feel like this offense is just going to be designed to make, to give simple throws. It feels harsh on Justin Herbert, but it feel, I feel like it's going to be designed to give Simple throws, almost certain completions for Herbert, even if they're not frequent. I think there's a lot of play action. I think there's a lot of – it's going to be a lot of running the football. I think he'll finish in the top 20. I just don't think he's a top 12 guy for fantasy this year. Yeah, I, I just – he's coming up the payday as well. So um, that's the old cork in the, uh, in the bottle, I suppose, <laughs> isn't it? One of those ones. But looking to get paid. Yeah. Um, and look, he better start performing as such. Yes, his percentages aren't great um, and probably needs to prove that. But from a fan's perspective, we, we don't care about percentages. We care about points and we care about passing TDs. And this guy is capable of doing that. Well, this is going to be a very, very interesting situation to monitor throughout the year. <laughs> um Another guy who, as we talked about before with Aaron Rodgers, an older quarterback coming off an Achilles, Kirk Cousins. Now, we, we talked, we've hyped up the Bears offense a lot. I like the Falcons offense even more. You know, the John Robinson, Kyle Pitts, and Drake London. I think in each, in each facet, they were the, the first in their position drafted in each draft class. Right? You've got Kyle Pitts, who has, what, three? This He's entering his fourth NFL season now. Um, tight ends take a little bit longer. It wouldn't shock me if he had a fourth year whopping breakout. Um, Drake London, in his third year, he's had some of the worst quarterback play I've seen in a while. Um, and now he's got a gun. And Bajan Robinson, as we've talked about the last two weeks, Raheem Morris, the head coach, wants to get him that football a heck of a lot. He wants to use him like Christian McCaffrey. It's music to the ears. It's all coming up, Kirk Cousins. The only sort of thing that's stopping him is 
How does he bounce back from the Achilles? Um, I'm less concerned about Aaron Rodgers coming back from the Achilles than I am Trevor Lawrence, which sounds weird because there's a Trev, did I say Trevor Lawrence? Did I? I meant I mean Kirk yeah. Cousins. Um, because Aaron Rodgers is just you know a freak of nature, whereas Kirk Cousins isn't. Um, I I don't know. I I, I don't think uh, he pushes top twelve. I think he's he's one I've put in the category as best of the rest, if you will. Um, what are your thoughts? Well, it's a hard one, right? Because if you're and this is what they're saying in the NFL, I suppose. But if Bijan is going to be running the ball left, right, and centre, they want him to be next to Caffrey. How can you, in any perspective, decide that Kirk Cousins is worthy of a twelve, the top twelve pick in his position? Um, now it's hard to really predict. This is probably the hardest player to predict because he's coming off an Achilles, right? And he's 37 years old in a whole new system. So it's just impossible to predict what he's going to put in. But as you said, he's got a great offense. Um, but the thing that scares me the most is Bajan Robinson. He's going to be taking touches off Kirk Cousins. Um, you know, if he's getting goal line carries, that means Kirk Cousins ain't going to get those touchdowns. So, and he's not really a mobile QB. He's not going to really give you much on the ground. So, um, look, he's probably going to be a top 15 QB. You know, he'll have those games where he blows up for big scores, but I just don't think I'd touch him at all, to be honest. And as I said, for an, for an NFL move, I love it for the Falcons, but for a fantasy perspective thing, I'm not a huge fan. I'd probably let him go. Well, I'll I'll, I'll drop this bomb on you. Uh, he's going as the QB nineteen. Yeah, that's fair. You leave him. Yeah, you leave him. Uh, oh, oh, QB eighteen. Sorry, eighteen. My him apologies. Deep, yeah, but I don't think he'll finish in the top fifteen. I, a uh, barring a best case scenario for this Falcons offense, I agree. Um. Interestingly, Justin Her- uh, not just well, Justin Herbert's going at QB. What's that? If he's 18, 16, QB 16. Trevor Lawrence is QB 17, who we think is a genuine candidate for a top 12 finish that we spoke about uh, last episode. Um, I'm I, on Kirk Cousins. I think he's got all the pieces around him to push for the top 12 but then Kirk Cousins himself might not be up for a top 12 finish. I think that's probably how I'd summarise it. Um, You're just uh, yeah. making my ears bleed before there, Guns. It was just a lot of value was coming out of my ears. Um, <laughs> you know, you had Trevor Lawrence in there. You got Justin Herbert in there. There's like, you know, we're talking QB 16s and QB 17s there. And I'm just thinking, I'll take a slice of that. Yeah, I, like, you know, I thought that Justin Herbert was dra- being drafted close to number 10, but, like, he's not, is he? Um, oh, interesting. Sleepers projected him for 3,967 passing yards. Yeah, right. Yeah. Anyway, a uh, bit off topic there. Um, now we move to the category of called good streaming options. This is the polite way of saying don't draft these guys. Just pick them up off waivers if you need a backup. Um, now, the first guy I'll put here, and, you know, maybe it's a bit harsh on the poor fella, but Matt Stafford. Um, I mean, at some point he's going to regress. He is 36 years old. Uh, he's pretty banged up. He had that, was it last year? He had that big, Back issue that nearly ended his career. Uh, I said that. Admittedly, years. yeah, he's had that for years, has he? Yeah. Um, and then you've got, of course, he's got Puka Nakua, he's got Cooper Cup, Kyron Williams, and Blake Corum. So the offense he's got in front of him is really good, but and he's got a great coach in Sean McVay. Uh, the question is, you know, are we going to start seeing Matthew Stafford winding down, or does he still have? A fair bit of production in him. I don't think he's worth a draft. I wouldn't draft him in fifteen rounds in redraft. If you've got a deep roster, uh, 
then maybe you, you throw a late pick at him in case he has a, I don't know, it's some put something together for fantasy. But I, I just think that he's, we're probably seeing the the later latter days in Matt Stafford. Yeah, as you said, he um, he finished last year as a QB fifteen, and that was when Puka had a massive, massive rookie year. So um, he only missed two games last year, which was one being the last game of the season, and one being I think it was mid year, yeah, week nine. So um, yeah, as you said, he's looking at his scores last year. He didn't really have any stinkers. Like there was nothing really below. He had one score below 10, believe it or not. Um, and that was 9.7. The rest of his scores are very, very steady. We're talking, you know, 15, 16, 17s. But his big blow up games are going to really go up to 23. So, um, yep, he's 36 years old, getting older. He's injury prone. His back's not, well, it's obviously not 100%. hasn't been for five years. But, um, yeah, I think he's getting drafted exactly where he should be. And if you need a safe QB later in the draft, he's probably the guy. Um, or you take him, if he's on waivers, you probably take him for good matchups, green positive matchups, because he does have Puka Nikua and Cooper Cup there. So, yeah, that's how I say that. Yeah, pretty cut and dry, that one. Um, one that isn't cut and dry is Minnesota. Now, you'll notice I haven't said a quarterback because, well, we don't really know what the heck's going on there. I mean, we spoke at the top of the show that Sam Darnold is currently the QB1, but will it be that way by, by the time week one rolls around? Probably not. Um, or, or potentially. like We don't know is really the point. Uh, let's talk in the event that JJ McCarthy starts week one. Uh, how do we view him in 2024? I view him as a really, really deep option still until he proves otherwise, uh, which is a shame because anyone that has, has is surrounded around Justin Jefferson and Addison and Hawkinson realistically should be pushing top five. Um, again, he's a rookie, hasn't played a game. So it's probably a bit cruel to say that because he might come out and dominate for all we know. But that's probably not going to happen. So um, it's hard to really imagine what JJ McCarthy is going to be. I don't think he starts week one anyway, which probably leads to Sam Darnold. And again, how do you know what, well, what do you know about Sam Darnold being a bloody QB or top 10 QB? You don't because it's never happened. Yeah. Oh, I, if I'm looking at this from a streaming perspective, I'm probably letting it go. Like, even if you, you have a look at the one start he had in San Francisco, which is probably the only offense, it's probably the offense that rivals what Minnesota have in terms of well-established players, right? Um, We're talking, it was against the Los Angeles Rams, uh, he got 17.46 fantasy points, completed 16 of 26 for 189 yards and a touchdown, and ran 17, seven times for 19 yards and a rushing touchdown. So, like, yeah, probably get solid production out of Sam Darnold, particularly now that you have Jettas, you have Addison, you have Hawkinson, you've also got Aaron Jones out of the backfield. It, it's a very solid offense. It's actually a very good offense. Um outside of the quarterback play. So if, if Sam Darnold can have a wild career resurgence, uh, then, you know, you have a genuine streaming option in Darnold. But uh, he's nowhere near being drafted right now. He's going 292, according to Sleeper. That's that's around where Michael Penix is being drafted this year in Rage. Oh, which tells you all you oh, need to know. that is stiff. That is stiff. Yeah. <laughs> that is so stiff. Oh. Oh, and Dorian Thompson Robinson's around there as well. No, that is wrong. What 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 is even more wrong than all of that is Aiden O'Connell is being drafted later than Sam Darnold. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What is wrong oh. with the world? Oh, I don't know, but 
Uh, yeah, I wouldn't expect too much uh, from any of those guys there besides Aiden O'Connell and Sam Darnold, who, if given any sort of time, will at least produce something from a fantasy perspective. They're not going to be riding the bench the whole season. Yeah, I mean, Sam Darnold, now let's say best case scenario, he starts week one. Mm. I think that he could carve out a nice role for him, though. Um, now, if he comes out and starts dominating, then, you know, he probably starts and, and, and probably plays for the rest of the year, let's say, for argument's sake. Um, it'd be rude to make a change, I reckon, if they got something going with such a good offense. Um, eventually, yes, they're going to have to go to JJ McCarthy to see what he's all about. But there's nothing wrong with sitting McCarthy for a whole year as well and just letting him mm. experience what the NFL is all about. Um, which I think the NFL should, or the team should go down that route a bit more. Um, because some of these players coming into the league and they're just not ready. Um, so I'd be okay with Sam Darnold starting for the year. Um, but I also want to see the best QB starting in that team. So if that's Sam Darnold, then it's Sam Darnold. And if it is Sam Darnold, then he's probably a borderline top 20 QB, let's say for argument's sake at the end of the year. And I probably would, uh, well, he's definitely not touchable in any sort of one QB leagues, but um, the two QB leagues, he's probably sitting there in your bench somewhere as your third QB, uh, covering for any buys. And um, you're just hoping that you, when you start in, he blows up for a 25 banger. Yeah, because let's talk super flex. The best case scenario, right? You're drafting Sam Dine with one of the last picks in your draft probably, right? Just just with the nature of how deep quarterbacks are this year and he's been drafted around 290 in redraft, which makes him, I know, quarterback 1 million overall. Um, he has the potential to be a, a, one of the better insurance policies there is if he gets a full season of starting football. Now, it is Sam Darnold. And I had a, I'm having a look at his rookie season right now. It was it was okay. And then if you look at Carolina, it was absolute garbage. Um, I think there's something there for him. I think there is. But, you know, we're talking about a guy that's bounced around teams and he's actually a bust of a pick at quarterback at number two overall. Oh, shit, yeah. No doubt about that. Yeah. So, yeah. You not you don't reach you don't reach for Sam Darnold if he's there you take him if he's and that's only in Superflex you don't draft him anywhere else. No, nah, I don't think anyone's stupid enough to draft him in one QB league. You'd imagine. I mean, in my dynasty league, I picked him up off the waivers as soon as he signed with um, with Minnesota. Um, <laughs> funny enough, I only have two QBs in that league, and he's actually my third QB. But um, yeah. That's fine. Um, and he's going to sit on the bench for as long as they please. Yeah, pretty much. Um, let's look at the Tennessee Titans. Will Levis. Um, <clears throat> I'm not really sure what to make of him. Like, you've got a guy with DeAndre Hopkins, whatever you want to call Calvin Ridley at this point. Um I don't. I can't remember who who their third wide receiver even is, but uh, they've got a Conquo. Like you've got Tyler some Boyd. stuff there. Tyler Boyd, that's who it is. Thank you, Tyler Boyd. You've got some stuff there. It's his second year. Um, do I have faith that he can develop? Yeah, I do. I. What's the ceiling on him though? I guess is the question. Well, there's a viral video that ran around the other week. Him and his <laughs> yeah. missus. And I tell you what, he uh, got a lot of respect for me after seeing that. Um, so he finished last year as the QB 33. Did start in week eight, though, for his first game. And he came out and dropped a big 26 banger in his first game in. Four touchdowns. And everyone was thinking, shit, this guy can play. After that, didn't do anything. So I would expect some improvement. Um, I, Funny enough, he's actually getting drafted ahead of Kirk Cousins. 
which I think is wrong. Um, I think he's borderline top 20 for my liking. Um, but in saying that, once upon a time, DeAndre Hopkins and Calvin Ridley were the bee's knees of the wide receivers in the league. So um, take that for what it is. But, um, you know, let's see if he can improve. Because he has got now, he's now got Tony Pollard there, his RB. And as you said, Calvin Ridley, DeAndre Hopkins and Tyler Boyd. So it's not an awful group of guys he has around him. He just needs to improve himself. Mm. But those wide receivers would have been a, these days back when I was in year nine, though. So <laughs> I, I, I'm not super confident. Two years ago? Yeah. Hey, uh, <laughs> I'm not super confident that, uh, you know, you're going to get uh top 12. You're not going to get a top 12 finish out of cool levels. You might get a top 20. Um, the upside, I you know what? That he's pushing it. Sorry to interrupt you there, but you know what? He is 24 years old. 24 years old. And if we're talking about guys that can improve and has upside to the game, he's the perfect example of getting better from year one to year two. So I, I don't know. It's just, if you draft him as a QB 20 or around about the QB 20 and he turns into a borderline top 10 QB, that's where your value is. I think that's the perfect definition of improvement. So I don't know. I, in deeper leagues, I'd have a look. Yeah, I'd have a look too. I mean, we spoke about Darnold before. I take Levis over Darnold every day of the week. Uh, and would I take Levis over Stafford? Probably. I probably would take Levis over Stafford. I don't know about you, but um, yeah. I, I mean, look, this will be a hot take, but I take this guy above all of them, Deshaun Watson. I, I feel as though we may actually see a bounce back season. He's finally had his name out of the headlines. For a little bit, I feel like we're going to see some sort of return to form for Deshaun. Mm. Is he a broken man, though? Ah, uh, probably off the field, yeah. But like, uh, I don't know. I think I mean, the ta- like he's shown the talent in the past, and maybe I'm getting a bit too what's the word uh, nostalgic. Uh, but if he can find a way to return to Texans to Sean Watson, uh, there is some serious value there. Yeah, you're not wrong. I mean, the games that he did play last year, he played not one, two, oh, I can't even call that really a game, but he played five games last year, 100%. And he went 19, 11, 20, 18, and 15. So, if he can translate that into a whole year, um, what, that's probably the QB 12, 13, something around there, maybe even a bit higher. Um, but my massive concern of Deshaun Watson is his injuries. I mean, he can't stay healthy. He's still injured now. Um, well, I mean, he's still he's drawing at, uh, at at the minicamp, but there is brackets there saying shoulder, so he's still carrying a lingering injury. So, um I don't know. They went and signed Jameis Winston in the offseason to try and get their backup QB to get a bit better because they probably had concerns that this guy might go back down again. And then they also signed Tyler Huntley too as a a QB3 on their roster. So there's clearly some concerns there that he can't get back to 100%. Yeah. I mean, like, look, I get it. But at the same time, it's the show. Um, These are Mm. some guys that had. So it says here that he's he was QB twenty seven in points per game, right? Okay, mm. fair enough. Now, might I just flag that you know Joe Flacco's in there? He's not going to be a starter. Um, who's it? Jake Browning's in there. He's not going to be a starter. Sam Howell's in there. He's not a starter. Jeff Driscoll, Josh Dobbs. We're talking about a guy that's pushing QB twenty. Um, you know, upon reflection. Like, he's being drafted at, what, QB 25 right now. Uh, so it's value, but it's not the kind of value you want. Also, I'll throw in that. Um, Russell Wilson's borderline as well, because is he a starter? Who knows? Uh, mm. 
I personally believe that uh, for sure can bounce back. I, I really do. Uh, to what extent, I don't know. Uh, is he just is he just a decent streaming option? Yeah, probably. That's probably all you've got to view him as. And he'll have his games is- because he's got Amari Cooper, David and Joku. Uh, I'm sure there's more Jerry Judy. Levers. Jerry Judy, of course. Yeah, he's got he's got talent now, around him. Is he one of those? In let's go to Dynasty Leagues here for a second. Is he a buy low option in a Dynasty League? Hmm. Yeah, I, I I can see where you're coming from. Um. Yeah, potentially. I mean, it depends on what. Uh. Well, I suppose beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And if they're overvaluing him, you know, you say no worries. Enjoy Deshaun Watson, whatever that resembles in twenty 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 four, right? Um. But you'd think most managers would be willing to trade him away for you know. A bit more than a bag of chips, um, and in which case, would you sell him for a second round or two second round picks? No. Nah. Well, yes, I would. Yeah, Sorry, no. yes, I would. I wouldn't. I don't think I would. You would hold on to two second round picks. You'd hold on to just short over two seconds. Yep, I think I would. Ooh, I think yeah, okay. in in superflex leagues, this is based on superflex leagues, obviously. I think. It's hard to get, and and clearly he showed last year that when he's playing, he's good, right? Like, I just don't think I'd move on from him. And you're not getting a first rounder for Sean Watson. I don't think anyone's going to sell you a first rounder for Sean Watson because reality is he should be sitting on your bench. But as you said, if he gets back to form and stays in the field, he could be worthy of a start yeah oh and i've i've just flagging the fact that i called deshaun watson qb 27 uh that hasn't removed a negative 0.8 that he had where he got yeah he played 16 percent as well in that game so he can't even put that in no and so that just further bolsters his average um but yeah I, i think What's the what's Deshaun's actual value? It's probably, you know, I feel like it's a, a like a, talking very hypothetical here in Superflex, like a Sam Darnold in a second. Yeah, yeah, it's such a hard one with Deshaun. I think what you're going to try and do in it on on a trade is try and fleece the manager. Try and find a way to get him done. Try and undervalue him to his to to your uh, league mates, and and then just really cash in because he's only twenty eight. Still, he's got plenty of football ahead of him. He's just signed a massive deal. Like, was it last year? Start of last year. So, mm. and he, as you said, he's got Amari Cooper, Jerry Judy, Elijah Moore was still there, and then Joku. So, um, he just needs to stay healthy. He just needs to stay healthy. Here you go. I've got the final number on what he what his average was points per game. It was eighteen point three two, and that places him at QB fifteen. See, at startable in superflex leagues. At startable in superflex. Yeah. Now, let's move away from Deshaun Watson to uh, my quarterback one in terms of my team, uh, Geno Smith. Now. <laughs> I'm going to try and get through this one as unbiased as I possibly can. Uh, but the soon, sooner that Sam Howe starts, the better for us. Get that one out of the way. Um, but in terms of fantasy, he's got three stud receivers. Um, no offense, a pretty good pass-catching tight end. Not elite, but he's a pretty good pass-catching tight end. And, you know, you can you can get some passing down back value out of Kenneth Walker and Zach Charbonneau. Uh, what that means for Gino, probably nothing changes other than the fact, you know, Gino was just talking about how exciting the new playbook is. So maybe there's uh, the potential for some more explosive plays, but I think the overall stats remain the same. I wouldn't draft him. I wouldn't go anywhere near him. 
Um, he's 33. And they've just signed Sam Howe or traded for Sam Howe, should I say. So the pressure's on Geno Smith. Um, and look, they may start Sam Howe at some point next year if this guy continues to be average. Um, he, had a, he had a decent year, but when you've got when you've got um, DK Metcalf, Smith and Jigba, and Tyler Lockett, you really should have big blow-up games. Mm. Um, I mean, anyone would be lucky enough to have those three. Um, they're not... You know, it's not one of a, you know, an elite trio in the league, but it's still very good. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't take him. And he's just a solid, solid streamer, I suppose, based off matchups. They're in a very tough division. San Fran, um, the Rams, and Arizona. Uh, yeah. Um, so two teams there that you play twice a year that are very solid defensively. So you have to play them four times. Um, and then Arizona are okay, looking to get better. Um, but yeah, I would not draft uh, Geno Smith. And you'd need to really convince me to stream him in good matchups because I'm not in love with him. Yeah. I think this is just one you let go through to the keeper. Um, Baker Mayfield. Now, obviously had a bit of a career resurgence last year because he was heading down the Sam Darnold path. Um, But now he's a well-established starter. He played every game for the uh, Buccaneers last year, played almost every snap as well. Um, had some pretty good games. He went low on two instances, uh, but everything else is well above 10 points a game. Uh, how do we view Baker Mayfield? Oh, it's a hard one, isn't it? Did you know he finished yeah. as a QB 10 last year? <laughs> oh, QB 10. I mean, yeah. albeit the second half of the year, he went bonkers. Um so you've got Mike Evans, who has eclipsed a thousand yards in every single season that he's played in, which is again bonkers. And then you've got Chris Godwin playing in the slot this year, so he should be a lot more efficient and involved in the offense. Um, yeah, it's a hard one. I don't know if I would take him early as a top ten to twelve QB drafted. Um, but how can you really deny what he did last year? I mean, he even won a playoff game, um, beat the Eagles last year. So, again, he, he was playing for his career, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. And I guess the question is, is Baker Mayfield only going to perform when he's backs up against the wall or is he always going to be a consistent performer? And I suppose we'll find that out this year probably. Um, but for me, fantasy-wise, he's going QB 21 after Matthew Stafford. Uh, would I take Baker Mayfield over Matthew Stafford? Probably not. I think Matthew Stafford still has, you know, elite, elite. Like, obviously, Mike Evans is elite, and Chris Godwin is probably verging on elite himself. But you've got Puka Nakua, Cooper Cup. Like, those guys put up legendary... Well, Cooper Cup put up a legendary receiving season back in 2021. Puka Nakua mm. put up a legendary rookie season last year. Uh, these are really freakish talents. Uh, yeah, I'd be going Stafford still, despite the fact that Mayfield's younger, more mobile. Because, um, yeah, just better situation for Stafford in this case. Um, yeah. Would you take Stafford so, over Mayfield? I would, yeah. Um, I think I would. I think he's going to save the floor. Um, interesting enough, this is just so stupid. But Taysom Hill has got a higher ADP on Sleeper than Bacon Mayfield. <laughs> this is based off a one QB league, so I sort of understand why yeah. to a degree. But, um, yeah, come on. Um, but, no, I would take Stafford over, over Bacon Mayfield. I think it would be hard for Bacon to, to, to match what he did last year. Um, he just signed, well, just signed a contract, should I say. So... I would expect him to take probably a step back this year. Um, I mean, what did he have last year? He had, what did he throw for last year? He threw for 
He threw for 28 touchdowns last year, which was a career high by one touchdown. So if he surpasses that, I'd be shocked. Mm, yeah. I think he's definitely a streaming option, though. Against good opposition, oh, yeah, you've definitely. got Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Jalen McMillan, you know, Rashad White's not a bad pass catcher, Kate Otten in his third season. There's some stuff there to build around. But yeah, yeah, yeah uh, for me... A good streaming option, but nothing more. Uh, another guy who I think is a good streaming option, provided he keeps his starting spot, is Daniel Jones. Now, the dude might be the worst starter in the league. And, you know, I don't think that's brutal. I really don't think that's brutal. Um, But he runs and, you know, rushing quarterbacks, fantasy football, it's a match made in heaven. If he throws four picks and 100 yards and he gets no points for his passing, oh, well, he's just a running back. Bam, 70 yards, two touchdowns. That's a classic Daniel Jones stat line. You know, um, he'll do something. He will always find a way to get you a solid-ish total. Sometimes he'll have a big game. They're, they're, he ha- he'll have a game where he scores quite literally zero points. Uh, you know, I'm you not negatives? sure what all the negatives. Um, for me personally, he'd come off an ACL tear. He's not going to be as good of a runner off the ACL tear. He might find himself gone from the Giants at some point this year. Um, yeah, they're paying him $40 million a year. <laughs> <laughs> they have to get out of that immediately. Um, he's not it. Um, now, you say he's a good rusher, I- I'll take that for what it is, but his O-line sucks as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think he had a game before he got injured where he had, like, he got sacked, like, eight times. Um, oh, the Seahawks that's... sacked him 11 times. I remember that game. Was it 11 times, was it? Yeah, no it was 11 way, times. 11 he times. killed him. He absolutely uh, let me killed just him. check that. Cause it was... Sorry, it was 10 times. It was still double digits. Oh, um, hell, that's good. So, yeah, look, <laughs> he's such a pisser, Danny Dimes. He had a game, <laughs> so this is how he started off his season. He had a game of two points. He had a game of 30.7. And then he had a game of three, seven, and seven. But if you're playing in leagues where you get sacked, he got sacked seven times in one game, 10 times in the other, and six times in the other as well. Now, <laughs> Unless he's oh, going to get Malik Neighbors heavily, heavily involved and he doesn't turn the ball over or get sacked, he might be a good streaming option. But he can single-handedly lose you a game. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, no. No, thank you. I'll tell you what. If he's playing an absolute bottom-of-the-barrel team and I was down a quarterback, I'd probably go. I'd probably go. And I mean that... Uh, with you're talking the a sexual way? Uh, sure. Why not? Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it it's rough. I reckon he's benched by week five, though. So, how much of oh. the streaming top talk there is to it, I don't know. But give me so Tommy Devito. Are you telling me Devito? Are, are, are you telling me or are you telling me Drew Locke? That's how well the Giants oh. are going. Oh, Drew Locke's there. Oh well, okay, they're fine. Drew Locke. Yeah, so Easy. Shit. Week one started Drew Lock. They are so shit. Oh, I feel <laughs> so bad for Malik Neighbors. So I do really I. Do, like it's it's a Marvin Harrison Jr. level talent in a crappy team. It's like the meme where the Bugatti's in this old shack. Well, <laughs> as you said, as soon as a well, if they get rid of Danny Dom sooner rather than later, they might be okay. But he ain't it. He ain't it. Drew Locks it though. Um, <laughs> Bryce Young. Now, it, it feels a bit harsh to be talking about this dude so late because he's being drafted between, um, he's being drafted after Geno Smith, after Drake May, after Deshaun Watson, and you'll love this one after Bo Nix. 
What? Yeah, I know. Why is he going after after Bo Nix? The dude is. I, I understand he had a quiet year last year. It's his rookie year. You got to give him a chance, right? Like the dude is the first overall pick last year for a reason. He killed it at Alabama. Uh, he showed some flashes at times last year. Um, and if I get his stats up in front of me here from uh, last season, there are a couple of games there where he finished inside the top 10 for fantasy quarterback. So he had a game against Detroit where he got 20.28 uh, and a game against Green Bay where he got 22.18. There was a lot of single-digit rubbish there, though. And mm. I think that's just because of the dumpster fire that was that Carolina Panthers offense, mm. um, which, you know, how you want to view that, I don't know. It's certainly improved this year, though. They've got Deontay Johnson, Xavier Leggett. They've actually got a pass-catching tight end. They've got a proper bell cow running back. It all looks to me like Bryce Young massively improves on last year. So there's a reason why I've got Bryce Young to start at the moment. I, in Sleeper, you can actually start a player, so that means you can keep track on what they're doing. Mm. Um, so there's a reason why he's start at the moment, because I do believe that this guy is better than what he was doing. He's a better than a QB 23 on the year. Um, yeah, he gets a, his second proper training camp. He's got a couple, well, he's got Deontay Johnson now, who's a fantastic route runner. Adam Thielen actually had a really good year last year for a veteran wide receiver. And as you said, he's got Leggett. Um, Jonathan Mingo is still in the mix there for him as well. Um, so it's not like he hasn't got nothing there. So I expect Bryce Young to improve. I don't know how much by, but it's something to watch. Now, if you're streaming him, which he's probably still a streamer at this point, which is fine, but if he improves, you keep him on your roster. Um, well, as in a rapid improvement, should I say. If he improves, he might go to QB 18 and at that point, you can probably just drop him. But if he rapidly improves and pushes top 15, then I would probably keep him. Yeah, I, I think I would too. He's got a, he's got flashes. I, we spoke, I spoke about it before. He showed flashes last year that he can get the job done. Uh, he did miss a game against Seattle. That was it. Otherwise, he played almost 100% of snaps, barring, you know, maybe four or five that he missed. But mm -hmm. I'm pretty keen on Bryce Young this year. And at that value, I'll be drafting him in a super flex league, I'm sure. Yeah, so now that you say super flex leagues, he would probably go in the bottom two rounds, you'd believe, depending on how many rounds you go and how many teams you've got. But most leagues primarily will probably have him in the last couple of rounds, maybe if, if not the last round. And look, he I'm going to say it right now, he could be a league winner for you. He could be. He could be. Yeah, he, could be the, he could be the difference between... You drafting three QBs and he's the third QB that takes a rapid improvement, or he just might be waiver wide material. But he could be a league winner, and this is where you win your leagues. You draft these guys for the opportunity to have rapid improvement. Yeah, and I lean towards him having that rapid improvement just because of the talent that he is, Bryce Young. Uh, could he still finish in the top twelve? Best case scenario, yes. Uh, like ninety percent chance it doesn't, but in the best case scenario that he fully delivers on the potential he was he had promised in college, you know we're talking very much in the conversation for top twelve finish. Um, a guy that had a, quite a few top twelve finishes throughout his season last year was Derek Carr. In fact, he had one, two, three, five games where he finished in the top twelve in quarterbacks. Um, oh, six games we finished in the top 12 in quarterbacks. He just had these random, massive <laughs> blow-off games. Like, he, was, he just went nuts. He just went nuts. In yeah. A few games, and then absolutely uh, tanked in others. So I don't get it. I guess that's the, the career of Derek Carr, isn't it? Mm. 
Yeah. Um, he's a genuine definition of a roller coaster. There's some weeks he's good and there's some weeks that he's shit. Um, he's also the perfect example of a great streaming option. Um, so last year, as you said, he had some big blow up games, but they were like, some of them were weird, right? Tampa Bay's defense is okay in a way. And he had three points against them, but then he comes out and dominates against LA Rams at 25 points. So you just can't predict what he's going to do. Um, yeah, I don't know. I would, um, he's definitely a streaming option and just playing in good matchups, screen matchups and he might be okay. Yeah. Like I think he's still going to be a streaming option. Uh, the Saints were speaking highly about Spencer Rattler, but no, I think I'd be still backing in Derek Carr. I think he'll start all 17 games. I think you're going to get, there's going to be some big plays from him. What's he got? He's got Chris Olave, Rashid Shahid, you know, two guys that really stretch the field well. Taysom Hills on that roster. That makes any offense exciting. A bit biased, but yeah, really yeah, he's exciting. Got and he's got Alvin Kamara. Like, it, it's a good offense. And if he can just, you know, maintain or slightly improve in his quarterback play from last year, well, we have someone that can push to be maybe around that 15th spot. Yeah. Um. Well, the final one we've got here tonight is another tricky one. We might have we might have ended on the hardest one to predict. <laughs> that is Pittsburgh. Yeah. Um well, let's talk about it from two perspectives. What's the perspective if Russell Wilson starts? How do we view this? I say we let Russ cook. Um let him cook. He's probably in pole position, as I said, for starting job currently um and i think he will start he's 35 years old so you probably don't get that extreme value he's probably going to slightly decline in a way um new offense mike tomlin i don't know how they're going to work together it's again it's just a hard thing to predict but if he's going to start please do one thing please do one thing and give the ball to george pickens this guy is too good to be left alone. Use him. He's seriously good. Um, so, look, I think the Steelers would be smart to play Russell Wilson game one, or week one, should I say, um, and see what he's all about. Um, and if you shit, then that's fine. You've got Justin Fields there, who is, again, a starting level caliber player in the league. Yeah. I mean, if we were talking about, let's put a hypothetical toward Boyer. If Justin Fields was on the uh, uh, New York Giants, right? We're viewing, I've, I would have put Justin Fields in the, uh, he would have been mentioned much earlier in the show, put it that way. Um, if he starts at Pittsburgh, though, that's an even better offense. And if somehow he's the week one guy, I think he can push to be in that, you know, around the 12th pick, the 12th quarterback. I'm not saying he can be a top 12 guy. He's going to be around there, though, because of the rushing four, because he has actually got quite a bit of talent as a, as a passer. He just, sometimes he just pushes the ball a bit too far. Yeah, I mean, I don't know about Justin Fields. I don't think he starts week one, as I said. But if he does, you're right about the rushing yards. He racks them up. I think he had a game where he got close. I, I think he might have the record for rushing yards in a game by a QB, if not second to Lamar Jackson. I can't remember the actual stat, but um, was it in a game or a season? I can't remember the actual um, the whole figures to it, but. Um, the rushing yards alone, that's where he really makes his money. Um, I want to see him more involved as a passer. Um, he's few and far between good games as a passer. Um, one week he'll show that he's good enough and then the next week he won't. So um, he's very unpredictable in his passing attempts and completions. Um, I mean, last year he had games where he went for 10 attempts. Uh, that's just no good. Um, 
Yeah, like 23 attempts, 16 attempts. Like, it's a bit all over the shop. I want to see him pass it a bit more. You know, he's had 40 attempts there for 166 yards. Like, that ain't good. Um, so, yeah, I just want to see him improve as a player. And if that's sitting behind Russell Wilson for half a year to get better, then so be it. Yeah. Um, just clarifying your comment about most rushing yards by a quarterback in a regular season game. Uh, it is Justin Fields, and he got 178 yards. Uh, yeah, I thought it was Justin when Fields. When that was, I'm not immediately sure, but that's very easy to check. Um, I feel like it might have been sometime. It wasn't last year. I think it was the year before. Yeah, it was. Um, to get the, here we go. 42 points that game. <laughs> yeah. Pretty, he, he threw for three touchdown passes, no picks, 15 carries for 178 rushing yards, and a touchdown. And then next next week, he runs it back, has 13 carries for 147 yards and two touchdowns. <laughs> like, yeah. And, and that, he, he that's he QB1. Do. It's back-to-back 40-point games. That's his ceiling. So to call yeah. him a streaming option if he's starting week one is an understatement. He's a he's actually someone you must roster if his name is the starter at any point. Because that's, yeah. league, that's league winning. That's properly league winning. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely it is. Um but even based off last year, um, he's rushing yards. I'm going to start from top to bottom here, um, which is weird because this is the complete opposite of Justin Fields. So rushing yards, he had, but this is between one, weeks one and six. He had 59, 3, 47, 25, 57, and 46, which realistically is nothing, right? But in those weeks, he threw for four touchdowns in two of those games and in two of those games, he had over three or nearly 300 rush uh, passing yards. So uh, what can, this is what I mean about Justin Fields. I just don't know if he's running it or passing it. You just want to see him put it together. And I think, you know, if there's any coach that's going to be able to help him put it together, it's going to be Mike Tomlin, right? You'd hope so. Yeah. Well, I think we should probably call it there. Um, we've gone through a lot of quarterbacks. Um, not much in terms of, uh, you know, really stand out. Uh, I think we're pretty keen on Caleb Williams. Uh, we've talked about him a lot. We're pretty keen on him for a big fantasy season. Uh, we think there's some value in guys like Baker Mayfield, Bryce Young. Uh, we're a bit undecided on, on Justin Herbert. And I think we both agree that, uh, Daniel Jones, won't see out the season as the starter. Um, we'll be back next week. We're talking about running backs. Um, will we go through every player? Probably not. Um, will we have? Will we still go into as much depth and dribble as what we usually do? Probably. Um, <laughs> anyway, remember to like and subscribe if you're watching this on the YouTube. And um, if you're listening to this on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts from, make sure you give us a download. And- Give us a five-star review whilst you're at it. That'd be great. Uh, We'll catch you next week for running backs. Uh, Yeah, see you later.